The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. <laughs> This is your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. In about 14 minutes, the sponsor of this program, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States, will have something important to say to homeowners, a message which over the past eight weeks has led thousands of Americans to request more information about the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. So, Mrs. Housewife, if your husband is not listening to this program, better send one of the children to fetch him. Tell him he's going to hear about America's finest plan for home ownership. A plan that can save you money. Tonight's FBI file, The Surplus Swindle. Upon whom should rest the greater weight of guilt for illicit operations? The criminal operator himself? Or the professing good citizen with his double code of ethics who denounces the criminal on Main Street and trades with him in the alley? Tonight's case from the files of your FBI was inspired by this hypocrisy of the professing good citizen who underwrites illicit commerce. In a Chicago apartment hotel overlooking Lake Michigan, an attractive young woman dressed to go out for the evening is pacing the floor in a fit of ill temper. Presently, the cause of her ill temper inserts a key in the door. Trudy! Trudy! Trudy, my dear. I'm right here. Uh, oh. Uh, hello, darling. I said hello. I heard you. Uh, Trudy, darling, you look lovely. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. In fact, you're simply... Where have you been? Uh, how's that, my love? You were taking me for cocktails at 6, dinner at 7, and the theater at 8.30. It's now five minutes after 9. I've had nothing to drink, nothing to eat, and the curtain's been up for 35 minutes. I can explain everything. To tell you the truth, my dear... You're lying. Trudy. Who won the fourth race? Lightning by... I knew it. That was very unfair of you. How much did you blow? Uh, what's that? How much did you lose at the races? <clears throat> uh, have we any bourbon left, my dear? Answer me. Well, uh, quite a bit. How much? Everything. What? Uh, just treat it lightly, my dear. I have a plan whereby we can recoup... You lost $10,000? Fate, my dear. Kismet. Oh. oh, I have frightful luck. Even the horses I was afraid of were running out of the money. I knew this had happened. Now, Trudy, spent I... spent three months on the swindle that got us that 10000 and you drop it in one afternoon. Darling, you must be philosophical. Easy come, easy go. Easy go is right. You get out of here. I, uh... What? I said get out. And don't come back till you got that 10000 Trudy, darling. I'm warning you, if you don't get that money, I'll turn evidence for the government in that Oklahoma swindle and put you out of circulation. Now beat it. Where will I sleep? Just get that dough. If you don't, you can sleep in pinstripe pajamas. Earlier that evening in the Chicago office of the FBI, an assistant to the agent in charge was sitting at his desk when... Mr. Adams? Yes? I'm Special Agent Roan of the Indianapolis office. Oh, come in. Uh, thanks. <laughs> what brings you over here? Uh, you, you remember that general bulletin all field officers got from Washington about a week ago about that Oklahoma swindle? Oh, sure. The man who posed as a government land agent and sold some drilling rights. Yeah, that's it. John Fremont was the name he used. You got something new on it? 
Fremont is in this area somewhere now. How do you know? Police checked on a car this afternoon that was parked in an Indianapolis garage four days ago. Had a Oklahoma license. It belonged to John Fremont? That's right. Well, I guess that calls for a little teamwork on our part. Yeah, I've, I've started to check on Indianapolis hotels. But the garage manager believes he overheard Fremont say he was taking a train over here to Chicago. Uh, I understand there was a girl mixed up with him. She worked with him. Yeah. And she wasn't in the car when he drove it into the garage. Well, they're probably still together anyway. Uh, that's probable. I'll notify the police department right away, then we'll start combing the city ourselves. It'll be like looking for a couple of needles in a haystack. Well, we found smaller needles in larger haystacks, and I have a hunch that a couple of needles like Fremont and that girl are pretty likely to stick somebody around here. And we'll hear the yell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Who is it? Package for Mrs. Fremont. Oh. Greetings, my dear. What do you want? I've already announced that. I have a package for Mrs. Fremont. You see? Is there any money in that bundle? A potential fortune, my sweet. I mean cash. Well, uh, truthfully, no. Then I can't use it. Uh, Trudy, please. Get out of here. Not until I'm allowed to plead my case. Now, let me in. You keep ah, out. Ah, 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 ah. Ah. That's better. Look, I'm telling you right now, any con that you pitch at me is just a waste of time. My dear girl, I'm here to present the opportunity of a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just open this first package. What's in there, old mutual tickets? Don't be bitter. Now, go ahead and open it. Okay, do I eat it, wear it, or throw it at you? You wear it. And on you, my dear, it should look ravishing. Oh, brother. That's it. Now, uh, take away the tissue... What the... A uniform. A whack uniform, darling. Look, what's the gag? I'm making you a, a member of the armed forces. Now, wait a minute. A lieutenant in the service of your country. In fact, my personal aide. Huh? Uh, this is my uniform here. Who are you, McCarthy? No, uh, just a colonel. Look, colonel, I don't know what this is all about, and I hate to disillusion you, but the war is over. Granted, my dear. But there is still an army, and there is still larceny. I intend to capitalize on both. Here we go again. This is my most colossal creation. I don't want to hear it, Colonel Fremont. From now on, my dear, a nom de plume. Colonel Edmonds. Edmund Schmedmonds, I ain't playing. Kindly wait until you hear my plan of attack. No! You are undoubtedly aware there is a shortage in the consumer market of many items of which the army has an abundance of... I'm sorry, miss, but we're all out of that album. Try us again next week. And now, uh, what can I do for you, miss? Uh, I mean, Lieutenant. I'd like to get Duke Ellington's latest album, please. Oh, surely. It's right here. Oh, there we are. Anything else? No, that's all. That'll be $2.92. Okay. Here you are, $5. Thank you. Two ninety-two, three dollars for five. Thanks. Oh, by the way, what can you do for me in the way of a radio? Well, I'm afraid I can only take your order. I can't promise when you'll get delivery. Oh, it's that bad, is it? Yes, and no telling when it'll get better. I see. Perhaps I can do something for you. I beg your pardon? Would you like to buy some radios? Would I? I could sell all I could get my hands on. Why? Well... I'm stationed at Chicago Signal Depot, and the colonel I work for, Colonel Edmonds, he's in charge of selling the Army surplus radio sets. Oh? Are you interested? I should say so. But I couldn't compete with the bigger dealers on quantity. You could if you didn't have to go through regular channels. Oh. You still interested? You bet I am. How many sets could you handle? What kind are they? Suitable for a table model. And they're the best, I can guarantee that. What price? $25. I could arrange for you to get 200 of them. That's $5,000. That's right. Too much for you? Well, no. 
Naturally, the colonel could transact no business with you at the post, you understand? Of course not. And this would be an all-cash deal. You'd be making it on your own responsibility. I understand. Look, Colonel Edmonds will be registered at the Hotel Jerome tomorrow noon. What's your name? Trenton. Have the money with you. Okay. I'll be there. How's the needle in the haystack hunt coming along, Mr. Adams? Well, it's rather slow business, Roan. Well, that's an advantage we have in Indianapolis. There are not so many hotels to check. <laughs> and, of course, if Fremont or the girl happens to have an apartment here, that makes the hunt even harder. Well, wherever they are, hotel or apartment, I'm sure they're using other names. Yeah. We've alerted detectives in all major department stores. Oh, in case the girl spends some of the Oklahoma money that way, huh? That's right. And we've alerted all the banks in case Fremont tries raising money the hot check way. Good. All we can do for the present is finish the hotel check, which will take a few more hours. And if that doesn't turn them up? I still believe they're bound to try another swindle. Sit down. Uh, sit down, Mr. Trenton. Uh, thank you, Colonel. Will you have a cigar? A spot of port? Uh, no, thanks. How soon can I get delivery on the radios, Colonel? Just as soon as you care to pick them up, sir. You mean it's up to me? My dear fellow, in a transaction of this kind, you could hardly expect me to have United States Army trucks deliver them. Oh, oh of course, I didn't think of that. Uh, take down this name and address. All right, just wait till I get my pencil. There we are. General Warehouse, Clark and Division Streets. Are the radios stored there? Uh, yes, and you contacted Mr. Randolph. I I'll telephone him and order him to release 200 sets to you. Good. And now, if you don't mind, I have a couple of other appointments. I, uh, oh, uh, yes, I believe you know the terms. Yes, I have the money with me. 5,000, wasn't it? Uh, yes, yes, that is correct. Here you are, Colonel Edmonds. Well, thank you, sir. And you may rest assured I'll say nothing about this. Yes? Excuse me, Colonel, but didn't I understand the young lady, the lieutenant, to say that you were stationed at Chicago Signal Depot? That is correct, sir. I had a son there during the war. Bully for him. The Chicago Signal Depot is Signal Corps. That's right. And you're attached to the Signal Corps? Indeed I am. It's been my honor to serve with that branch for 15 years. That's funny. Uh, uh, what do you mean? That collar insignia you're wearing is artillery. Oh. Well, I, uh, I, uh, sort of double between the two. What? Well, you know how things are in the army. Uh, when we run short of arms, we uh, use signals. You what? Yes, that's the fortunes of war, Mr. Trenton. Now, this sounds pretty fishy to uh, me. Now, just a minute, sir. No insults to the uniform, please. I think you're a phony. I should have suspected something about this setup before. But I was so anxious to get the radio... I've sir. had enough, Mr. Trenton. So have I. I want my money back right now. Now, look here, I sir. said I want my money back or I'm picking up that telephone and I'm going to... Not gonna... so fast, sucker. Huh? Oh... The phony whack. Get away from that phone. Oh, no. I'm going to... Thanks for diverting his attention, Trudy. Just hand over that money, stupid. This calls for a quick retreat. And now, before the FBI file on the surplus swindle resumes, as it will in just a moment, here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. For eight weeks, I've been telling you about America's finest plan for home ownership. But next week, the Equitable Society will have a new and different message. So it's very important for you to listen carefully tonight to get firmly in mind how to finance the mortgage on your home for maximum safety protection, and economy. Remember, the largest single investment the average man makes in his life is in his home. After careful comparison with other plans, over 80,000 American families in 900 communities have chosen the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan because it combines these five important advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled paid off in full if owner dies. 
And besides, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned in full to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Two, a special cash fund is built up ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, this cash fund increases as the mortgage shrinks. It can be used to shorten the term of the mortgage. Pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in as little as 14 years, saving six years interest. Four, Mortgage interest not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Five, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission or bonus charges. Frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages. Death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, get complete information on the Assured Home Ownership Plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, The Surplus Swindle. The professing good citizen who deliberately enters into an illicit transaction is not entitled to too much sympathy if he comes off with the worst of the bargain. And nine times out of ten, he does if the transaction is an attempted swindle. For swindlers live by stacking the cards against their potential victims. Some 30 minutes after the bogus army colonel had struck him down and fled with his money, The man called Trenton regained consciousness and made his way to the Chicago office of the FBI, where he has just finished giving a brief account of what happened. That's about all I can tell you, Mr. Adams. I don't think it is, Mr. Trenton. What do you mean? You've left out some details that would put you in a bad light, haven't you? I beg your pardon. The girl posing as a whack. She more than likely told you the deal for the radio sets would be an off-the-record transaction, didn't she? Well, she... You've been in business long enough to know it was irregular. I'm as much entitled to those radios as anybody else. Oh, you thought you were getting a bargain at the taxpayer's expense? They offered to sell me 200 radio sets and I... And now that it's turned out to be an out-and-out swindle and you've got a lump on your head and lost your $5,000, you suddenly realize it was not right to deal with people like that. Well, you're surely not going to let them get away with it. We're not going to let them get away with it because they've broken the law. That's all I ask of you. But as for you, Mr. Trenton, I hope you learned a lesson from this. Well, that's a strange attitude. What about your attitude? Your attitude toward your moral obligations as a citizen. Look here, Mr. Adams. You call yourself an honest citizen, I'm sure. Well, certainly. Yet you deliberately conspired in what you thought was a deal that would have robbed your own government out of 200 radio sets and $5,000 and put at least twice that much in your own pocket. I still say... No, Mr. Trenton, I haven't much sympathy for you. Roan. Yeah? The descriptions Mr. Trenton gave us, check them with those of Fremont and the girl we're after. Right. And we'd better alert all radio dealers right away in case they try the same stunt. Okay. Mr. Trenton... When we catch these people, we let you know. Will I get my money back? If they haven't spent it. Good day, sir. Sailing, sailing over the bounding main. Good afternoon, Trudy. Where have you been? I just took a stroll downtown. I thought we were supposed to stay undercover. This was a business mission. You know, the cops have got to be looking for us, Bob. I'm aware of that. What have you got in those packages? Something for our next job? There ain't going to be any next job. Not in this town. We've got time for one more score, my dear. Now, let's take advantage of it. Oh, no. We're getting out of here today. Here's one package for you and one for me. Wait a minute. More uniforms? That's right. Open it up, my dear. I should say not. Why? 
No more costumes. You couldn't have done any worse than that last job if you'd been dressed as a Nazi spy. We got the money, didn't we? And this will get us more. Ensign, salute your lieutenant commander. Oh, no. Yeah, come on, we'll get to work right today. I won't do it. I've got a scheme figured out this time that's absolutely foolproof. I'm not listening. Now, here are your sailing orders. That must be the sucker now. Well, let him in, my dear. Okay. How do you do, ma'am? Oh, come right in, Mr. Clay. Thank you. Commander Edmonds, this is Mr. Clay, the used car dealer I contacted this morning. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, how do you do, Mr. Clay? How do you do, Commander? Uh, have a chair, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> I uh, understand, Mr. Clay. You're interested in purchasing some of these surplus cars we have on hand? Yes, if I can get immediate delivery. Well, my dear fellow, you can go for them at once. They're in the government carpool right here in the city. Good. Uh, how many are you prepared to purchase? I understand they've never been driven. Just as good as the day they rolled off the line. I want ten of them. You, uh... <coughs> ten? Uh... <coughs> you, uh, uh... You understand the terms, of course. Uh, $500 each. Uh, that is correct. I have the money with me, 5000 cash. Uh, good. Then take this address. I know where the carpool is located. Uh, very well. You will contact the Lieutenant Mason. I shall telephone him meanwhile and order him to release ten cars of your own choosing. Their apartment is located at the end of the hall, Mr. Adams. At least you came off better, Mr. Clay, than their last victim. He got a lump on his head. I guess I deserve one myself. You have the key the manager gave you, Ron? Yeah. When did you discover you had been swindled, Mr. Clay? When I went to the carpool a while ago. I just left here two hours ago. That's given them a pretty good start. Here's the apartment. Open it up, Ron. Right. Go ahead. Thanks. They sure lost no time getting out. Look at the mess. But they couldn't have gotten very far. It's like I said, Mr. Clay, two hours is a good start. Yes, but... Uh, let's take a look around and see if we can pick up any clues, Ron. Right. Uh, can I help you with anything, gentlemen? Uh, no, thanks. Anything in those papers in the desk drawer? Nothing that means anything. Looks like they've cleaned out everything that might have given us a lead. I'd better call the office and get agents checking on train, bus, and airline terminals. Hello, operator. Uh, get me central... Wait a minute. Not now, thank you. Hmm. What, what, what's the matter, Mr. Adams? I just noticed something that might be something. Hmm. What's that? Where? Look at this scratch pad here by the phone. Uh, what about it? There's an impression of something that was written on a sheet of paper that was torn off. Hmm. Can you read it? Yes. 902C. Hmm. You think that might be something? It's bound to be, or it wouldn't be written there. Could it be an apartment number, maybe? Oh, it could be, but... 902C. I... What in the world could that stand for? 902C. Wait a minute. Got an idea? Yes. This pad was right by the phone. Let's check the switchboard operator. See if she has a record of Fremont's calls. <laughs> How'd you make out? I have a list of all the outgoing calls Fremont made in the last two days. Good. We can check it over right here in the lobby. How many calls are there? About a dozen. Let's take six apiece and go to work. Mr. Adams? Yeah? How are you coming along? I've checked three of them so far. No luck. Well, I've finished my list. They were all to bookmakers. You take one of these numbers here. I'll finish up on the other two. Roan. Roan. Yeah? I think I've found what we're looking for. Really? Yes, get the office on the phone. Tell them we're leaving town on the first plane. Where are we? 
This is Atlanta, darling. If we'd taken a plane, like I told you, we'd already be in Miami. I couldn't get space, my dear. You're just afraid to fly. Oh, oh, oh nonsense. <laughs> what time do we get to Miami? We'll be there bright and early in the morning. You'll just be there early. Uh, what? Skip it. Trudy, my love. Yeah? I've already developed a plan for making our vacation hours profitable. You better have if you want any spending money. I'm holding on to this 10000 It's all yours, my sweet. You bet you're ever loving... What's the idea? Probably the conductor wants to check our tickets. Yes, Mr. Fremont? Uh, you must have the wrong compartment. I think not. This is car 902, compartment C, isn't it? Say, what is this? We're special agents of the FBI, miss. Uh, what? You fu- and thanks for jotting down your space number on your telephone pad, Fremont, or this might have taken us a little longer. I don't know what you're talking about. Just come along with us. I think we can arrange for you to wear a government uniform that you've missed. John Fremont and his wife both received long sentences in the federal penitentiary for their two swindles. It is healthier for the American public every time a pair of criminals like John Fremont and his wife are safely placed behind penitentiary walls. But it is no help in trying to stop the increasing crime wave if some of you allow yourselves to be swindled. Again, the FBI asks you not to do any business with any stranger who approaches with a proposition whereby you will become wealthy without doing any work. Such a proposition bears the mark of a swindle, with you as the victim. So every time you're asked to make an investment, check up on it first. And when you have learned that lesson and learned it well, the swindlers will come to their deserving fate. Next week, another thrilling case from the files of your FBI. We'll tell you about it in just a moment, but now... Let me refresh your memory on the more important features of the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Remember that the mortgage interest is only 4%. Remember that if the owner dies, the widow owns the home without any mortgage at all. Yes, the Assured Home Ownership Plan is practically foreclosure proof. To get the full story, talk to the Equitable Society representative in your community. Ask him for literature that gives all details. You'll find his name in your local phone book under the name Equitable, E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Sinister Shakedown. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner, the author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. Now, this is Carl Frank speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Sinister Shakedown. On this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.